Welcome to Springville Seventh-day Adventist Church online here in Melbourne, Australia. We'd like to remind you to continue sending us your comments as well as your suggestions on how to make this program better. And of course, we'd like to remind you that for hymns, you can read down on the description down below, as well as if you would like to support the ministry of this church, please read down on the description. And uh, the question for this week is the following. Has there been anything that has been worth waiting for during this pandemic, I repeat it, has there been anything worth waiting for during this pandemic? Please write it down. Thank you. And as we continue, let us have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we just want to uphold you today. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being who you are to us. Lord, we acknowledge that we have fallen short of the glory of God. But Lord, we want to continue praising you nevertheless. We're here today because we acknowledge that we are, we are who we are in your eyes. And you are our creator. And Lord, we want to ask you to please be with us today, to uplift us, to take us close to you, that we may see how you are. And also that you may be with the speaker for this morning, that you may talk to us through him as well, that you may talk to us through the songs and, and whatever else we do during today. Because we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. We like to sing our first hymn for today, which is 195, which is in the description down below. And is everybody knows this hymn, Showers of Blessing, hymn 195. our speaker for today and this is Jonna Samuela. Thank you Jonna. Well good morning and happy Sabbath Springvale Church. You know it's my first time doing this but it's I'm looking forward to it and um, you know I believe God does have a message for us and as always I always believe I should start with a prayer because I always need help when I'm here so I'm just going to say a quick prayer, and if you could join me, bow your heads, close your eyes, and we'll say a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, 
It is by no accident, Lord, that um, we are in the position we are, Lord, during these times. Lord, we are grateful, Lord, that we can use technology, Lord, to spread the gospel and to be heard, Lord, while while no one comes to church. Um, the, the message is still getting out there, Lord, so we'd like to be um, grateful and thankful for the times we live in, Lord, and we know, Lord, that we live in um, a time that is soon to end, so I pray and ask that you be with us, Lord. Send your spirit to be with myself and those who are listening, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, everyone, if you're like me and you're living in the times that we're living in, you may have asked yourself this question. Why is everything falling apart? You know, it, it's something, it's, it's, I'm sure it has to be on your mind. You're looking at what's going on. There's a lot of protests going on. And a few months ago, or we're still in it, a few months ago we got introduced to this new virus which stopped us from coming to church physically. And um, we're now worshipping online. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that there is something going on and that the world is falling apart. So if you're like me and you've asked that question, I think it's a simple answer. But we're going to look at two passages in the Bible. They're the same story, but I'm going to ask you this question now. What is the difference between, what is the difference in the story? Because there's something that's not said in, in one of the passages or the parables that isn't said in the other. So we're going to go through these two parables and we're going to, you, you'll be familiar with it. It's called the, um, it's called Building Your House on the Rock. That's what uh, my chapter says. If you have your Bibles, can you turn your Bibles please to Matthew chapter 7? That'll be our first passage. Matthew chapter 7. And while you're there, our next passage, if you want to get ready for it, will be Luke 6. So this will be the wise man who built his house upon the rock. So remember that question. And I know you're there because you're probably on your devices. And we'll go to Matthew first. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. So keep an eye, remember, keep an eye. We're going to try and find something that's not in one of these passages. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And the Bible reads, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, this is Jesus speaking, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. I want to keep your, your mind on that, that little word there, rock. We might come back to it if we have time. Verse 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. So it wasn't built on the rock, it was built on sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So here we see for the first time the word fall. And the house which was built on sand was the house that fell. And like I said, if you're wondering like I am, why are things falling apart? I believe this, these passages might help us understand that. So our next passage, the same story. We're going to try and identify what's different. So we're going to go to Matthew, uh, Luke, sorry, Luke chapter 6, verse 46. is the same story. Luke 6, verse 46. And we're going to start there. Amen, I know you're there. So let's read the same story in Luke's eyes. Verse 46. And why call ye me Lord... Lord, and do not the things which I say. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and it could not shake for it was founded upon the rock. Verse 49, 
For he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So here we see one of the reasons why our homes fall apart. And you probably could say our lives fall apart because our house or our home is not built upon the rock. And if it's not built on the rock, we know that when the winds come or when strifes come, that wind will blow on that house, which is built on sand, and it will fall. And we see a lot of falling today. Just have to turn on the news, everything is falling apart. And maybe because the foundation of everything that's falling around, around us in the world is upon sand. So what's different is that the house that didn't fall was built upon the rock. Now, the question, I, I'm going to come back to that question. Did anyone see what was different in these two passages? I'm going to give you a, a few seconds to think about that. What was different between Matthew and Luke's transition or interpretation of the story? What was different? What was different in Luke? Let me just say that. What was added in Luke that wasn't in Matthew? Have a quick look and then we're going to get into it. Okay. Thanks to technology, we're going to get straight into it. I want you to turn your, your eyes upon verse 48 of Luke chapter 6. I will read that again. This is what's different. See if you can pick it out. And he, this is about the, the wise man. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon the rock. So we see both homes, both houses here built upon the rock. But one thing different in Luke that wasn't mentioned in Matthew is simply the wise man digged deep. You know, I used to say that when we used to play sport, you know, you're in a, um, one of those tough times. And it used to be common, someone would always yell out, dig deep, which means you've got to dig, in, dig inside of you and try your, try your hardest. But here we see it, the wise man dig deep. Now, my question to you, another question, when did the wise man stop digging? I'll leave you a, a few seconds to think about that. When did the wise man stop digging? So we know he dig deep. But when did he stop digging? I'll go over verse 48 again. Just the part. He is like a wise man, a, a man, sorry, which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on the rock. So here is the answer. The wise man dig deep or he dug deep until he hit the rock. Now here is another thing I believe that will help us as Christians or Seventh-day Adventists. Not only if we do not want anything to fall around us, I want our homes to be stable. We've got to build our foundation upon the rock, our house upon the rock, and have our foundation on the rock. But here we also see that the wise man stopped digging when he hit the rock. Now what am I trying to say? I believe when it comes to Bible study, this is what I see. Others may, may see something different. When, when it comes to Bible study, we must dig deep in the Word of God until we hit the rock. If that doesn't make sense, I'll try and make it make um, a bit more sense. We read the Scriptures. You know, sometimes when you first start reading the Bible, it's, it's, it's a blur. It's boring, but I'm telling you, it's boring because we're not looking for something. So this wise man dig deep until he hit the rock. 
We need to study our Bibles if we don't want to fall like normal people are out there. We need to search and dig into our scriptures until we hit the rock. We need to read the Bible and study until we see Jesus. Amen. See, that changed my whole perception of Bible study. You know, there's times where Bible study is boring. And I'll be honest, a lot of you probably think Bible study is boring, but it's probably because we are not looking for somebody. Bible study will become that much more powerful when we look for Jesus, because he is there, and I believe he is the secret to our Bible study and the secret to us as individuals, not just, you know, God can save a family, but he will save a family one at a time. So as individuals, our spiritual walk must be, when we read and study, read until we find Jesus, because he is there. If we're not reading, we're probably watching too much TV, we're probably listening to too many radio stations that are, have a lot of rubbish on them, and our minds are confused. So that is a little challenge that we look for Jesus and we dig deep till we find him. I'm going to show you one more thing about a rock. There's two more things, but we don't have time. I'm going to try to do this in a, a couple of minutes. If you can turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 33, please. Exodus chapter 33. This is why looking for Jesus is very important. Because he will be the difference between life and death, I believe, in these last days. Exodus chapter 33, it's a well-known story. And just quickly, the children of Israel had just done one of the most, the craziest things I've ever read in the Bible. They were led out of the wilderness, and it wasn't too long. Moses was up in the mountain, and while he was in the mountain, he was up there for a few days, quite a few days actually, and they thought he was dead. And they started collecting jewelry, earrings, everything, gold, and mounted it and, and made a calf. A golden calf. So here's the story. They had just built a calf. Moses is now interceding for them. He's interceding for them. He's, he doesn't know what to do. But he asked this question to, to the Lord while he was there. And I'm, we're going to pick up the story now in verse 18. Let me go. Chapter 33 of Exodus, verse 18. Just quickly. And he said to the Lord, this was after he was trying to intercede for the children of Israel because they had made that golden calf, that famous golden calf. Verse 18, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness, this is the Lord speaking, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, all my goodness, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And get these next few verses. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. When I looked up that word, it means there's a place right by my side. Right by my side. And it carries on. And thou shalt stand upon a rock. You know, this just hit me. I've read this many times and I've always wanted to share this. Verse 22. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and will cover thee with my hand and will pass by. And I will take my hand away and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face thou shalt not see. Now, just we're going to come back to that and just quickly. When after all this, when Moses came down, the children of Israel could not stand the sight of Moses. His face was filled with the glory of God because he had just been in the presence. So he had to veil his face because it was too unbearable for the children of Israel to see. 
what a blessing it is when you spend time with the Lord. You know, I, I believe that there is a glow on the face when someone meets and studies with the Lord in the, in the scriptures. But here is what he said. I will hide thee, or I will put thee, now get this, the picture. God picked up Moses and he puts him, it says he puts him on the rock. And we've just been talking about the rock. He puts him on the rock and then he says, when I come down and when I walk past you, I, God, will put you in the cleft of the rock. And what's interesting about that is that, you know, when you look up cleft or cliff, it's a, it's a crack in the rock. And, you know, it just dawned on me one day that that is the gospel right there. God put Moses, not Moses put himself there, God put Moses in what I believe is a symbol of the righteousness of Christ. You see, a rock... We know in our, in our stories of Matthew and Luke, we know that is Jesus Christ. But here we see it is a crack in the rock. So he hides them in this crack or this cave, and then he, he walks past. You know, I believe, brothers and sisters, if we are to see God, we need to be wrapped in the righteousness of Christ in order to do so. It will be impossible to see God and not be wrapped or covered in the rock or wrap what we know and believe as the righteousness of Christ. It's also interesting, this rock had a crack. There we see in the crack the human side of Jesus and the rock we see the divine side of Jesus. Oh, such a beautiful story. You know, if you apply, it has to apply in everything we believe. The righteousness of Christ, we are told in Spirit of Prophecy, is the, she says, simply, I'm quoting here, she says, it is, if there is one topic that swallows all subjects that we believe, it is the righteousness of Christ. So that is my little thought for us today, exactly on time, but hopefully you are blessed the way that I was blessed, and I pray as everything is falling around us, the secret to not falling and our homes to be sustainable is to have our homes built on the rock and as individuals is to search for Christ in the scriptures. It might be blurry, but if you look for him, you'll find him and that will make all the difference. Bible study will become beautiful. So thank you, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath and we'll see you next time. God bless. Thank you, Jonna for those wonderful words today. We like to keep singing with our last hymn, which is number 338. And it's called Redeemed. Let us pray. 
Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the songs that we've just sung. We sang, thank you for your presence here above all, Lord, that we felt your spirit today. May, this, may your spirit, Lord, reign in us. And the words that were spoken today, may they stay in our minds for today and tomorrow, the rest of the week, Lord, until next Sabbath. We thank you so much for everything, Lord, that you do through us today and always. In the name of Jesus, we ask you, Amen. Well, we like to ask you once again for you to continue to send us your recommendations on how to do things better and also for you to continue sending us comments and encouraging one another through the comments that you make and encouraging others through the week as well. There's one thing I would like to tell you and that is God bless you and God keep you safe this week. Amen.